Welcome to the Fit Dad Nation podcast, forging strong fathers and raising a stronger generation. It's time to get up or shut up with your host, Steve Roy. Hey there, this is Steve Roy, host of the Fit Dad Nation podcast. Appreciate you listening in here. This is our first show of 2020, and I uh, hope you're off to a good start. Uh, we're about a week into our 45-day challenge called Project 45. Uh, this is our first ever very uh, strict no-cheat challenge that we've done. Um, and so it's actually going well. I'm doing it myself, so I, I've actually given up Monster Energy Drinks, Monster Zeros, which I've had a really uh, tough time with for, for years. Uh, I've been hooked on those, and... So I've decided to really clean things up, and so have so many other guys in the group. And so far, our results have been awesome. Um, so if you're looking to be a part of our community, I'll say right now the best way to do that is to look at uh, our free private Facebook group. It's called the Fit Dad Basecamp. Uh, you can uh, apply there, fitdadnation.com forward slash community. And uh, so you know, given the new year, uh, I want to talk about a couple things, uh, really specifically five things that I have in mind that I feel like you need to stop doing in the new year if you're you're serious about making change. And again, you know, everybody says they want to get fit, they want to get healthy, they want to look better, they want to feel better, but very few actually are ready to commit to it, invest in themselves, put in the time, the hard work, and then actually get after it and see it to the end. Very few. Uh, and so, you know, my hope for, you know, all of you, certainly everybody in my community, is that you take your health seriously and and just seriously 100% commit to it. You know, and if you haven't done that in the past, that's fine. You know, all we have is literally right now. So, you know, all I can say is, you know, let's just get after it. So I want to talk about five things. I thought of these things. Um, I've been thinking about this for a little while and I put together this short list of things that I think that are holding you back. And I see it over and over and over. You know, I've been doing this for a very long time, 22 years in the coaching business, uh, five years full time with the Fit Dad Nation. We've, you know, reached tens of thousands of people, dads. And so uh, I keep seeing a lot of these things pop up. And so, uh, you know, I don't want to overcomplicate your fitness. There's already enough of that out there. You know, I, my goal has always been to make it as simple as possible. It's not easy, of course, but the simpler we keep it, the more likely we are to stick with it. So here's what I'll tell you. Um, number one, the number one thing to stop doing in the new year, and again, this is seriously if, if you're ready to make a change. If you're like, yeah, you know, I'll give it a shot, then you're just wasting your time. So I want to say stop chasing transformations and start embracing hard work. So, you know, I'm all about transformations. I mean, we do transformation challenges in our groups, um, you know, and they're just fine. But the problem is, is we get too caught up in thinking, okay, this is my before and this is my after, or I've seen all of these befores and afters. And, you know, then you start comparing and then you start having all of these unrealistic expectations on what your body can look like. And so that's, can be, you know, in some cases it can be motivating, but in many cases it's, it's demotivating or unmotivating, whatever. Um, and I've seen that more often than not. It's, well, you know, so-and-so lost 40 pounds in 90 days. You know, why can't I do that? Or look at those before and after photos. You know, why aren't, why aren't I making progress like that? And you start beating yourself up and then, you know, you start slipping. Oh, well, one, you know, one cheat meal won't matter. And then the next thing you know, you're, you're totally derailed and you've quit, right? And so, you know, number one is realize that a lot of the transformations, a lot of the before and afters you see, especially on TV, like Biggest Loser style, are bullshit right they're doing extreme cuts they're taking extreme measures and unfortunately a lot of the stuff that you see online on these coaching pages are just not legitimate um you know i've i know firsthand that some people have used photos that weren't from their programs i've read other stories of similar things and it's just it's all sales driven the problem is most of of the consumers out there aren't going to take the time to say, "Huh, let's take a look at this on a you know on a on a deeper level. How do they make this transformation? Is this legitimate? Can I do some research? Can I contact the owner and say, tell me more about this person? Like their results look 
crazy good. You know, what's up with that? You know, tell me more about that. But but people just don't do that. They don't do their due diligence. They just say, oh, wow, that's amazing. Well, if they did it, I can do it, right? And then when they don't get those results, you know, they quit. And, you know, that's extremely common. So, you know, first and foremost, I'll just say, forget all the, the transformational work. Let's just look at hard work, okay? Let's just say, you know what? I don't give a shit what my before and after is going to look like right now. All I care about is putting in the work every day. Okay. Number two, this is um, maybe the biggest on the list, especially for dads. It's stop eating like a fucking asshole. Right. I talk about this all the time and it's so basic. This is so simple guys, but we don't do it. I mean, we already know everyone knows that most of the results that we see in the gym and our body composition comes from our day-to-day diet, right? Yet, we're still gorging on every fucking horrible food out there, fast food, fried foods, all the garbage, the industrial oil, industrial oils, you know, refined and processed carbohydrates and sugars. I mean, it's just, there's so much garbage, right? And But we know that. The information isn't the problem. We're just continuing to do it. Why? Because it's delicious, right? It's designed to be delicious. You know, uh, we are uh, on day seven here of our challenge and, you know, we're sticking to a diet. I'm, I'm doing a primal diet and I'm 100% no cheat for 45 days. And yeah, it's been hard. I mean, and, and I'm someone in the business, right? I'm used to eating clean. I've gone through long periods of being extremely diligent with my food and it's still hard. I still crave pretzels and chips and salsa or a bagel, right? So those those things that we've come to love and rely on, right? So I'm not judging you because you're eating like an asshole. I'm just saying you are eating like an asshole and you need to stop, right? And this is, it's so simple. Just seriously, you don't need a fancy diet book. You don't need uh, a fancy program. You don't need the keto. You don't need the carnivore. What you need is just to stop eating the foods that you know are bad for you, which is a lot of shit. And again, I, I don't get caught up in the, hey, there are no bad foods. I don't believe that. You know, I think there are a lot of bad foods. Um, I think food is either helping you or it's hurting you. It's not just like neutral. Um, so anyway, that, that's that's my take. And then maybe that's a topic for another show. But stop eating things you know are bad, like any packaged foods, crackers, cookies, chips, all the desserts, donuts, Anything sweetened like, you know, uh, sweetened tea and, and Gatorade, energy drinks, soda, obviously. Alcohol probably isn't the best thing, right? So, you know, are all those things okay in moderation? Sure, right? But the problem is, especially in this country, the U.S., we're, we're not a country that is familiar with the term moderation. We're a bunch of fucking fat slobs. And it's, you know, what are we at? 60%, you know, overweight, 35% obese. And it's getting worse, not better, right? Because we can't moderate our own food. We can't do it, right? It's it, Apparently, it's too difficult for us to do. So I'm just saying, make it simple on yourself. Cut out the, the few things that you know are terrible for you and then start eating better foods. Focus on whole foods that have one ingredient. A potato has one ingredient. A chicken breast has one ingredient, right? A bag of spinach has one ingredient, right? Just... Just things like that. You don't have to go crazy and say, I'm not eating any bread. I'm not eating any rice. I'm not eating any of this or that. You know, just if you want to eat rice, eat rice. Okay. If you want to eat potatoes, eat potatoes. If you want to cut those things out, that's fine too. But, you know, there's no room in your diet for Chips Ahoy or Pop-Tarts or, or, or Wheat Thins or Triscuits, right? There's there's no need for those things in your diet. They're empty calories. There's They're offering literally zero to your diet, right? So just be smarter. Okay, drink a lot of water instead of most of the other things you're drinking, right? Coffee's fine, green tea, herbal teas are fine, but all the other sweetened crap that we're drinking, we don't need it, right? So stop eating like an asshole. All right, number three, stop listening to people who don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Now, this is obviously subjective and, and I'm not claiming that I'm the foremost expert in the health and nutrition field. You know, I've been doing this for a long time, but of course, you know, there are plenty of people that are far better at what they do. There are a lot of experts out there and a lot of people that are good at what they do. But the problem is social media has allowed 
teenagers or pretty much any idiot that has a good body or feels like trying to make some money off of people's insecurities in this industry, it's made it extremely easy. There's no barrier to entry at all. And so you can hang up your sign saying you're a coach, an expert. No one's going to question you because they never do. Oh, wow, they look great, even though they're you know a 21-year-old kid that has no responsibilities and can work out as much as they want. They can eat whatever they want and lose weight. Uh, and they have good genetics on top of it. But hey, they're a coach. And I'm a 48-year-old guy that's got 50 pounds uh, that's been sitting on me. I don't move well. I've got four kids and a, a two-hour commute. But shit, this person will definitely help me out, right? Give me a break. I mean, use your head seriously. Don't look at the person and say, wow, they have a great body and they know what they're doing. That's not the case, right? Just like at the gym, when you see a huge dude, he's always the first one that's being approached by somebody. Say, hey, man, man, you're so big. You must know what you're doing. What should I be doing? And then they give them some bro advice and they don't know what they're doing, right? That doesn't mean anything, right? Some of the best coaches are not in shape. I mean, I don't really agree with that, but I know coaches that are extremely good at what they do, but when you look at them, they're not impressive, right? They, You know, it's just, you know, what what it is. That doesn't necessarily mean anything, okay? So, but, you know... I'm not going to give you a list of all the people that I think you should listen to because, you know, again, it's subjective. You may say, well, they're, they don't know what the fuck they're talking about because I don't agree with X, Y, or Z, and that's fine. But what I'm saying is do a little bit of homework, do a little bit of research, do a little bit of digging. You know, what's their background? What's their history? You know, are they successfully working with clients? Do you believe in their philosophies? Are they just trying to pitch you something? And a lot of times what they're telling you is is nothing more than a sales pitch wrapped up in another way. If you subscribe to their email newsletter, they'll give you all this amazing advice, but it's all wrapped up in a way that is heading you towards one thing, and that's a sale, right? Everything's sales-driven, and, you know, I get it. I, you know, I'm the same way. You know, I have to obviously make a living. I'm in business, but this business is notorious for people just trying to make a dollar without, first of all, knowing what the fuck they're doing. Number two, not really giving a shit about your results because they're never going to see you, hear from you, talk to you. They're going to hide behind a sales page in a funnel. You're going to buy their $27, $47, $97 product, and then you're never going to hear from them again. And, you know, you'll try it. You'll say, well, this isn't working or this is too generic or I'm not really impressed with this. And then you'll file it away somewhere on your computer and you'll never see it again. And you've lost $100 or whatever it is. So... There's that. Okay. Number four, stop thinking that there is a best diet out there. Okay. Obviously, again, and I could beat this to death, and I actually like to because it just drives me insane, but there's no best diet out there for anybody, despite all the claims. Right now, the carnivore diet is super hot. A lot of people are talking about it. Um... And I'm not saying that it's bad, right? There's plenty of, and we'll call it research, that is out there saying that it has all kinds of health benefits. And, you know, but here's the thing you can make a claim for any diet. Like you could find a piece of information or something that looks to be research on pretty much any diet that's ever been invented, and it'll sound credible because that's what it's designed to do sound credible so you'll buy it, right? Um, you know, the, the show Game Changers um, on Netflix has gotten a lot of attention. I've heard it many times on social. Oh, this has really changed the way I'm thinking about eating meat, right? And again, it's just propaganda designed to steer you away from that. And, and ultimately, it's going to be a sales pitch. You know, it, you can spin anything any way. That's, that's what you have to understand is you have to keep an open mind when you read this. And, you know, when you... You know, it just it drives me so crazy because I hear it so much. Oh man, so and so is just killing it on carnivore. So and so is killing it on keto. I said that's great. That you know, or, or keto is the way to go. Or when someone, uh, I'm part of a couple of men's groups outside of my own, and someone will always post in there, "Hey guys, what are you doing for uh, your diet?" You know, what's working for you? How, you know, what's the best way for me to get in shape? And then out of the woodwork comes dozens or even hundreds of responses from people that aren't in the fitness business, that don't know what they're doing, but happen to see results from a certain type of diet. 
And then all of a sudden they're preaching it, saying, oh, you, you have to try this. You have to do this is the way to go. I mean, keto with intermittent fasting is is the best way to lose fat. And that's not true, right? Does it work? Yes. Can it work? Yes. Does it work for everybody? Absolutely not. Here's the thing. For a diet to work, and I don't care what it is, it has to have three things. It has to be healthy, okay? It has to get you results, as in it's working for you in the right way, meaning you're losing body fat. And number three, it has to be sustainable. If you can't check those three boxes, you have no business doing that diet, okay? A cookie diet doesn't work because it's not healthy, right? The keto diet doesn't work for a lot of people because it's not sustainable, right? So find something that you can stick with. Like if you if you hate vegetables, don't do a paleo diet. But if you love vegetables and you love whole foods and you don't mind skipping out on like dairy and you love eating meat and, you know, um, maybe the paleo, paleo would work for you, something like that. The paleo primal diet work for you, right? But it also has to get results for you. If it's, if it's not working for you on some level, then you have to find something that does. And, and you know, I'm not saying to go out there and, and diet hop. What I'm saying is you need to do some research, think about it before you jump all in and see, okay, can I can I stick with this? Yes or no? You know, is this going to fit into my lifestyle? You know, if you're on the road four hours a day or five hours a day for your job or you're traveling four days a week and on planes, trying to choose a diet that requires a great deal of prep and cooking isn't going to work. Right, because you're not going to get home from your time off, and then skip out on your time with your kids and wife because you have to spend six hours prepping and preparing food. No, no one's going to do that. I mean, there there are a few people that'll say, "Yeah, I'll do that." Whatever. The vast majority of us won't. I wouldn't do it. So I'm saying, please keep that in mind. That you know, there's seriously, there's no best diet out there. It's not one size fits all. I don't care what your buddy's doing. I don't care how many people you've heard have had success on a certain diet. It may not be a fit for you. Lastly, I will tell you to stop selling yourself short. So, you know, this is kind of a big topic, but, you know, the reality and the sad reality is that a lot of us don't actually believe we can get into shape, like good shape, because we've never, either, we've either never done it or it's been so long and we've lost ourselves, you know, it's been, we've gone so far down the, the ladder that we just don't think, man, there's no fucking way I could look like that guy. There's no way I could be as fit as you, right? And I'm saying that's not true. I mean, you know, I'm 48 years old. I'll be 49 in, uh, this year. You know, I keep my body fat. It's in the low teens. You know, I'm, I'm relatively fit and strong. And I look pretty good for my age, for sure. But there's no reason that anybody, regardless of your shape, unless you have a, an actual medical or metabolic condition, can't be lean and fit. I mean, I'm naturally a lean guy anyway, so a lot of you guys aren't going to just be like skinny like me, but there's no reason you can't be down in the low teens body fat, you know, see your muscles, you know, in the mirror, see those shoulders poking out, maybe see a little bit of outline in the ab, you know, flex your biceps and see a little pop there you know, see a few striations in your shoulders, right? There's no reason that can't happen. None. Unless, like I said, there's an actual legitimate medical issue that you have that's preventing you from losing fat or gaining weight or not retaining water. You know, there's a lot of ways to look at that. But yeah, it's in your head. You've just conditioned yourself to believe that you can't do it. And I'm telling you, after 22 years in this business and working with many, many dads, a lot of fat dads, a lot of fat dads. We're talking 40% body fat, you know, 50, 60, 80 pounds overweight, weak, can't do one push up from the floor. Like those types of dads. Absolutely, you can turn that around. Is it going to happen quickly, right? It's going back to number one. No, this is not a transformation story. This is a hard work story. This is putting your head down, stop eating like an asshole. You know, do some homework, figure out what's going to work for you, and then seriously, just get to work and do not stop. There will be setbacks. There'll be times you want to quit. There'll be times you're going to hate your life. There'll be times that you think that it's not working. You're going to have plateaus. You're going to be frustrated. You're going to have cravings that are going to drive you to the brink of insanity. 
all those things are going to happen when you're doing this. It happens to everybody. It happens to me still. It's just, it's just what it is. You have to just ride past that shit. I don't care how you do it, whether you find something super motivational like a David Goggins video or, or listen to Jocko, you know, uh, you know, taking cold shower. I don't care what you do to get yourself jazzed up and motivated, but you have to do it to stay in the game. Okay, because what we're doing right now, guys, is not working. We are getting fatter. We are dying earlier. Okay, I'm so sick of seeing dudes walking around with their heads down. They look like shit. They feel like shit. Their confidence is shot. Right? It's affecting every part of your life. It really is. And I'm I'm not judging again because I've been there. I've shared this story many many times. I spent many years being miserable, being that guy. I had no confidence in myself. You know, I literally was the guy with my sh- my shoulders slouched and looking down at the ground, walking around the stores, just kind of trailing after, you know, my now ex-wife. You know, I just wasn't in a good place. And so many guys, whether you're married or not, doesn't matter, are in that place. And I'm saying, once you get into a, a different mindset and you start putting in the work and you start seeing a little bit of results and you start surrounding yourself with the right people and you start taking care of yourself... I promise you things will get better. Things will change. You will get happier. You will get healthier. You're going to be a better husband. You're going to be a better father. This is all part of this. This is what I do in the Fit That Nation. This is what I love to do. This is what it's all about, guys. I don't give a fuck about six-pack abs, bench pressing 285. I don't care. That means zero to me. I care about feeling awesome. Okay. I care about looking better. I care about being confident. And I care about having a a damn good quality of life and sticking around for my kids. You know, my kids are 14 and 11. I want to be around for a very long time to see them grow up and grow older. That's very, very, very important to me. So we have to start taking care of ourselves, guys. And I hope these five things help you. I hope you have a phenomenal 2020. If you need anything at all, stevefitdadnation.com. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks for joining us. And remember, if you want more information, check out the Fit Dad Basecamp group on Facebook. And don't forget to stop by fitdadnation.com. Until next time, keep kicking ass and taking the next step. You can do this, Dad. Dad.